feel like you just can never get your research right and no matter how much you try and how much energy you put in it always seems like every single experiment you try and do just never works out you may actually be sabotaging your own research without even realizing it today i want to talk to you about how you may actually be sabotaging your research and then how to prevent yourself from sabotaging your research in the future. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister and I got my PhD in chemistry and now I make videos on this channel to help you be more successful in completing your research with less effort. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you might actually be sabotaging your own research. And one of the biggest ways that I see other people sabotaging their own research is by being impatient and trying to get as much done as fast as possible. Often we really wanna be successful at research and this is actually a very good thing, but it can lead us to stressing ourselves out more than we should and it can also lead us to thinking that we need to try and get things done as quickly as possible. When this happens, we can become really impatient with things and try and fast track our research. And this can actually result in us having to spend a lot more effort to achieve the same result. So if you've ever experienced a time where maybe you're working on a project or you're trying to do a set of experiments and you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to try and fit it in in this time frame. And then you come back and the experiment failed. And then you realize that you did really simple things incorrectly because you were feeling rushed or you were just trying to get it done. When you do this, you're actually doubling the amount of work that you have to do because now you have to redo that experiment and you're putting in so much more effort and for less data and less progress overall because you're trying to rush things and you're not being patient enough to make sure that your experiment is set up correctly and then being able to just collect everything once and being able to move forward. If you're someone who struggles with being patient with results and being able to slow down a little bit, you're not alone. I think a lot of people struggle with this, but this can actually be very detrimental to your own work and it can even be detrimental to those you're working with. Because of you trying to do things more quickly, you're actually gonna stress out those that you're working with and it can be really difficult to move forward in a quality way especially if you have tense relationships with all these other people that you've been stressing out as things have been failing all along. Today I wanna to share the three main rules that I have that make sure that I'm doing my work intentionally. And this is one of the biggest things is to actually have intention in what you're doing every single time that you're doing it. And so if you have to wait to be able to do it more intentionally instead of thinking about something else or rushing off to something else while doing it, you wanna be able to do that. So the first main rule about performing experiments with intentionality is don't perform an experiment when you only have limited time. So if you get in at like 10 a.m. one morning and you have a meeting at 12 and you have this experiment that when everything goes right, it takes two hours, I would never perform that experiment in that time frame because more likely than not, not everything is going to go correctly. And so when something goes wrong, it starts to snowball because now you're on a compressed timeline because you have to complete something at 12 o'clock or you have to go to a meeting at 12, you're trying to get things done. So then things start to snowball as you do more and more stuff quickly where it's not actually accurate or things like that. And it snowballs all the way into where you don't actually have anything going correctly and that entire experiment is wasted. So whenever I have something that I think might take two hours, I want I usually wanna make sure that I don't have anything compressing my timeline within at least 1.5 to two times the amount of time I think it should take. If everything goes well, and I'm done in two hours, then I have about an hour or so transition time if I give a lot myself three to four hours, and then I can be able to move on to the next thing without focusing on the previous thing. This makes sure that I'm not constantly trying to do things as quickly as possible, because when you're stressed and trying to do things quickly, you're a lot more likely to make mistakes than when you know you have the time you need and you can slowly approach what you're doing and make sure you're doing it intentionally and correctly. The second rule about whenever I'm doing experiments is that for me to actually perform the experiment, 
I need to know at least 80% of what I'm doing. If you've heard me talk on this channel before, you'll hear me say a lot that you shouldn't wait till you feel like you have the entire plan and know everything about what you're doing. Because I know a lot of people will sit there and read article after article after article hoping that it'll make them feel more secure about when they actually go into the lab and really going into the lab is actually going to help you do your experiments and understand those articles better. However, if you don't even know 50% of what's going on in the experiment you're doing, you really need to actually make sure that you understand at least 80%. There's about 20% of room that you can kind of just wing it and kind of figure out things as, as you go along. But with that 80%, that means that you know enough to be able to make educated assumptions in the winging it part. Instead of just going in and setting up something that you don't really know much about and then realizing that you've wasted two or three days of your life because you're not actually moving anything forward because you didn't know much. If you are struggling to get to that 80% point, then you can either go and ask other people to help you with certain aspects of what you need to do, or go and instead of having like really important experiments you need to run, just go in and kind of play around with the experiment you're doing and try and get to where you actually know what you're doing. And then you can go in with about 80% confidence in what you're doing. The third rule is to have a research plan in advance. And so if you listen to what I talk about on this channel, you'll know that I really encourage you to have a thought out research plan before you go into actually collecting data on an experiment. This is going to save you a lot of headache in the future because you're actually going to know everything about the research plan you're conducting, what could go wrong, make sure that you have all your controls in place, and everything else that you need to have in place to actually make sure that whatever experiments you conduct are actually going to be valid and helpful for what you're doing. If you want help creating this research plan, I really hope that you uh, download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. This is going to help you create your ideas and develop those research plans so that when you go into the lab, you can be going in with intentionality and knowing that the data that you're going to collect is really going to be useful and pushing you towards getting published papers. I really hope that this was helpful for you and I hope to see you in the next episode.